when you're 24 miles up, which is where he started out, um, the gravity with him is not that different from the gravity on Earth. It's very, it's, it's almost identical. So he would feel standing on his doorstep before he jumps exactly, pretty much the gravity we feel on Earth. But of course, when he steps off, he starts accelerating, and he accelerates at about 32 feet every per second, every second. So he he gets up a speed, a pretty high speed, very fast. So he's in free fall. He's effectively weightless as he falls. He picks up an awful lot of speed, much more than we normally would, because if we jump, you know, jumped off a building, there would be ultimately be air resistance, and that air resistance would become significant. But where he starts out, there's effectively no air. The atmosphere is less than 1% of what it is on, a, on the surface. And so he basically accelerates, just under, purely under gravity. And then as he gets further and further down into the atmosphere, the atmosphere gets thicker, he starts meeting air resistance. So he cracks the speed of sound probably somewhere very high up where there's not a lot of air resistance. It's not dramatic physics, it's just a wonderful human achievement. What he's done is he's got a team of really good people together. He's managed to convince them that this is a wonderful thing to try and do. And he's led this team and inspired people to come together and do something which is at the outside edge of our you know, human ability to do. The money shot for me was that picture of him standing on the doorstep of his capsule. And you could see the black sky, then the blue sky, then the cloud. And you could see the earth as this, and you could see the curvature on the horizon. And there was this one man suspended in this incredibly high distance above our planet, which you could see was round. I mean, that just, it's just an inspiring thing.